So multilinear regression is a uh, is a is a more complicated linear regression model. So uh, last week we talked about the simple linear regression. So it is basically that y equals alpha plus beta times x. Okay, so it is called simple linear regression because uh, the relationship between x and y are linear, and also there is just one independent variable, so that is one um, x in that case. Multiple linear regression means that we will have more than one uh, independent variables, or in this case, we will have more than one um, axis. Okay, uh, so the model is like this. So we will have multiple uh, independent variables, or we will have multiple uh, explanation, exploratory variables. So we are trying to find out that, that how the y will change um, based on the, the other multiple variables. Uh, so for example, in our previous example, we see price equals um, alpha plus beta times area. Okay, so that is a, a sim simple linear regression model. So if we are going to use a multiple linear regression model, it will be like the price equals uh, beta 1 times number of bedrooms, beta 2 times the number of bathrooms, beta 3 times the lot size, and also beta 4 times area, and plus uh, alpha. So if we have model like and that is from the multilinear regressions. So it will be like each single variable will have its own unique beta, and also will have an alpha. So each single variable will have its own beta. Um, and keep in mind that for multilinear uh, regression models, we always assume that uh, the variables and those uh, follow a linear relationship. Okay, so variables follow a linear relationship. So if they follow non-linear relationship, then you should not use a linear regression model to, to make predictions. And the errors are normally distributed. Okay, so the errors should be normally distributed. And also the independent variables are not highly correlated. So in this case, number of the bedrooms, number of the bathrooms, lot size, and those areas, so those are the independent variables, should not be highly correlated. OK, so those are the three uh, assumptions when we are using multilinear re uh, regression models. So if you want to check whether or not they are li uh, the relationship is a linear relationship. So what we can do is that we can just, before we conduct the linear re regression models, we can create a scatter plot. So we can decide whether or not they have linear relationship. So in, for example, here, I would assume that this is a nonlinear relationship. So if I see okay, so the relationship between dependent and also independent variable is like this, I will probably use a non-linear regression model. And in this case, uh, to me, it's pretty um, linear relationship and with those two outliers. So in this case, probably I will use a linear relationship. And to check whether or not the errors are normally distributed, what we can do is that we can create a histogram and use histogram to check the distribution of those errors. Okay, we can check distribution of those errors and see if that shows um, it, if that looks like a, a bell curve. Um, and if that is, then the errors are uh, normally distributed. And to see whether or not those independent, independent variables are highly correlated, so what we can do, we can calculate the correlation, correlation among those variables, independent variables, and we can see whether or not they are highly correlated or not. OK, so that is the model. Um, so once we have the models, we want to evaluate, OK, so uh, do um, um, the perf performance of the models. And also we want to see that how 
the coefficient are significant or not. OK, so we can use the standard errors. So standard errors measure that how certain we are about our estimate of the coefficients. So how certain we are about our betas. OK, remember that for each uh, independent variable, we have a beta. So if we want to see how certain we are about our betas. Um, so typically, we calculate the stand errors. And stand errors is calculated based on like we, we take a sample of our data. And also, we estimate betas based on that sample. And the stand errors equals the standard deviations of the betas from different samples. Okay, the standard errors will be the standard deviations of those beta from those samples. And our non hypothesis will be that the beta equals zero. And we calculate the t statistics in this case. Uh, we have different types of statistics. So here we calculate t statistics, uh, which is the estimated beta divided by the estimated standard error. Okay. So estimated stand error divide estimated beta divided by the estimated stand errors. So let's see one example. So here um, we are uh, we want to measure the relationship between price and the number of the bedrooms and number of the bathrooms. Number of the bedrooms, bathrooms, and also lot size, and also area, OK? So each of them have its own beta. So beta 1 plus uh, beta 2 uh, plus this beta 3 for the lot size, and also beta 4 for the area, and plus alpha. So alpha is the intercept, OK? So coefficient will be those betas. So beta one is this one for the uh, uh, for the sorry in this case that the beta two for the bedrooms, beta one is for the bathrooms, beta three is the lot size and also area. So we have coefficient, and next we calculate the standard errors, and we do a t test, which equals the coefficient divided by the standard errors. And finally, we have those p-values. OK, so the finally, we have those p-values. So what the p-value can tell us is that, OK, so now you have those coefficient. So how, you, how are you certain about your coefficient? So we calculate the p-values. And also, our non-hypothesis is that those coefficients should be 0. And our alternative hypothesis is that the coefficient is not zero. Uh, so if we look at a lot size and also area, so remember that the um, so if we choose the point zero five as a significant level, and we can see the p value is smaller than that value, and in that case we can see that this coefficient is significantly different from zero. So we can tell that, OK, so the coefficient for the area is significant. And similarly, coefficient for the lot size is also significant. And however, for the bathroom is greater than 0 0.05 is not significant. And for the bedrooms, it is not significant. OK, so here, although we have the multilinear relation uh, models, the areas and also the lot size uh, do have a significant relationship with the p values. The bedrooms and the bathrooms, the number of the bedrooms and also number of bathrooms do not have a significant relationship with the price. Okay, with the house price. So the lot size and also areas are significantly related with the house price. And the bathrooms and also bedrooms, number of those bedroom bathrooms are not significantly uh, related to the price. 
based on our multilinear relation uh, regression model.